Hey guys, so I always have been practicing and analyzing Pat Metheny solos for my own enjoyment and personal research. <laughs> And I always have such a blast doing it, not only because I'm playing the music that I always enjoyed listening to growing up, but also because there are so many little nuances you will discover along the way that you never even thought about existed before. And what I noticed early on is that you can memorize and copy all the notes of a solo as much as you want, but if you don't have Pat's technique down to at least some degree, it obviously, I mean, just won't sound like it, right? So the last 10%, of the sound will be always kind of missing. And if you are already committed to tackling and memorizing a Matheny solo, then I think you really should go that extra mile and try to copy it as accurately as possible uh, to get the most value out of it. And I've been looking around the internet for clues on how to, I guess, demystify some of Pat's techniques. And there's great content out there, but somehow I always felt that maybe some parts are missing and I'm not getting the entire picture of what's going on. So that's why I wanted to share today some of the tricks and thoughts that I picked up over the years to make your solos sound a bit more like Matheny or come at least a little bit closer to it. So my plan is not to make a Pat Matheny guitar channel here, but um, the goal is to provide you with some guidelines so that whenever you want to practice a Pat Metheny solo, it will sound a bit more authentic, I guess. And as far as I know, there are minor little details that are missing in these um, transcription books of his. So I will try my best to just share some of these with you right now. I will probably do more videos in the future about some specific solos of his that will go into more depth and detail. So this video should really serve just more as a prerequisite to the upcoming videos. And this is going to probably take more than one video to explain, so get ready for it. Now, one little thing I wanna get out of the way is that a lot of jazz people will probably tell you, oh, you shouldn't practice these Matheny licks and you can't use them at your next gig or something. I mean, well, yeah, obviously I'm not gonna use them, but I'm still a Matheny fan and I play guitar and I will always be a student to this um, craft here. And I want to know how this works and obviously demystify it. So there's nothing wrong with trying to learn and dissemble the music that you like or trying to play along to. I mean, that's the way this usually works as far as I know. And since you found this video, I assume you want to learn something in a similar way and take some inspiration from it. Now, I don't know why there's always such a taboo around this topic. I mean, why is it commonly accepted to play Jimi Hendrix kind of style phrases, but not Matheny phrases in this world? Maybe because Pat set the bar unbelievably high. I mean, who knows? Different discussion, I guess. So again, take inspiration from it, uh, let it inspire you, and you can also see what's actually possible on the instrument. What you do with it is ultimately your choice, obviously. I mean, so just as a little side note here, and don't forget, it's also a ton of fun. Okay, guys, now most people will point out the obvious that Pat inverts the downstrokes to upstrokes in his right hand. Now, if you look at any footage of him online, you can clearly see him doing it in many situations when he also actually has the time to do it. Yeah, so like when there's a simple, melodic, singable phrase going on, maybe just on one string only. And not some crazy chromatic line. He's almost exaggerating it to get that popping sound. But what is actually happening when there are faster, busier phrases going on, when he doesn't have much time and has to switch to more, I guess, autopilot uh, in order to catch his signature phrases? Is he still inverting his picking then? I mean, things go by so fast, it's really hard to catch, but I think it's a pretty important uh, detail and cornerstone to his playing style. His right hand does get into this flow of picking the upbeats, 
but at the same time he also tries to avoid picking the downbeats and then also slurs if possible into the downbeats which enables that subtle flow even more. So let me show you what I mean and let's go back to the absolute basics and strip away all the notes and just look at the rhythms first. So when we have a regular 4-4 bar filled with 8th notes, we would of course have 8 possible starting points within this grid or subdivision. Now this shouldn't be any news to anybody interested in this material here I assume, but just in case. So there's the downbeat of 1, upbeat of 1, downbeat of 2, upbeat of 2 and so on. Cool. And your head would naturally go down, up, down, up, which, by the way, also translates on the guitar into down, up, down, up, right? So that's what you would instinctively do on the guitar and feel in your body. Now, if we invert our right hand picking directions, we would start with an upstroke, which goes against your instinct because your head would naturally go down in this moment. So this feels really awkward if you do it for the first time. Now you can see that I highlighted every upbeat now with a downstroke. And as I said earlier, Pat tries to avoid picking the downbeat if possible. So when we take that away, we are left with this. And now let's fill in the gaps by only using hammer-ons, pull-offs and slides for the downbeats. And you will end up with this kind of formula. Now this is just an example, but you can see that the first note gets slided into and the next note is picked with a downstroke. And then we have a hammer-on, which is followed again by a downstroke and so on. So basically only the upbeats are attacked with a downstroke and the rest is all slurred. Also, don't forget that a downstroke is naturally a little stronger and heavier than an upstroke. So this technique will automatically give the upbeat a stronger articulation, which most jazz players put a huge emphasis on anyway. They want to get that better swing feel, which is really hard to do on the guitar in the first place. But I think this technique will automatically get you into that state much faster where you are almost playing even eighth notes instead of the dotted eighth, sixteenth note. And on top of that, this picking technique will give you a little boost to play faster while using less energy and sounding much smoother at the same time. Now these are just some guidelines, yeah? they are not written in stone or anything and it's just a basic rule of thumb. But Pat is definitely able to switch to this mode when it's necessary. And you can also see other modern players inverting their picking directions here and there when it's necessary, but maybe not to the extreme as Pat does it. So before we work on some actual phrases of Pat, uh, I would highly recommend to you uh, starting with just a simple kind of warm-up exercise that highlights this technique or flow uh, he could get into with his inverted picking technique. And what I usually do with students first that want to get into Pat's style is just taking a simple C major or C Ionian bebop scale and try this out first. Alternatively, you could, of course, also go through all of the scales and licks you usually play and try to see where you can invert everything. You, know, you could spend a few months just uh, practicing this little technique. Now, there definitely is some rewiring going on in the brain when you try to invert all the picking directions from licks and phrases that you are so used to playing. So that is the reason why I would start with something very simple first. Okay guys, so here we are with our first example. Yeah, so let's just take a simple C Ionian bebop scale or C major bebop scale and apply what I mentioned earlier. So instead of just playing this the regular way, um, everybody would do down, up, down, up, down, and so on. We're going to pick the first note C with an upstroke. And the next note D will be a downstroke. And the E will be an upstroke again. And then a downstroke on F. And now instead of picking the G, let's hammer into it. Yeah, so so far we had up, down, up, down, hammer. And the G sharp we pick with a downstroke and slide it into A. All right? And then another downstroke for B that hammers into the C again. Yeah, so if you put it all together, it was up, down, up, down, hammer, down, slide, down, hammer. So 
as I've mentioned earlier, this technique doesn't work for every lick and every phrase under the sun, but you can already see just with this one bar that we already skipped um, picking a few downbeats and only pick the upbeats with a heavy uh, downstroke. So let's take a look at how we descend the scale again. Yeah, we basically pick the same notes as before again, but we're gonna add some pull-offs to this. Let me maybe go up one more time. So we had up, down, up, down, hammer, down, slide, down, hammer into the C. And then when we go down, we just uh, attack B with a downstroke, pull off to A, uh, downstroke to A flat, slide that into G, downstroke to F, pull off to E, and downstroke D. And that would be the first one for the first example. Yeah, so maybe one more time. Right? Try to even exaggerate maybe a right hand for now. So as you can see, there's not one upstroke in the second bar anymore. So the pattern worked really well for this part of the scale. Now what I want you to do next is to simply pull off from the D into the C when you repeat this scale and cycle. So the last note of the cycle, the D, uh, you pick again with a downstroke and pull off into the first note, C. Right? So this way we would have down, pull, down, up, down, hammer, down, slide, down, hammer, down, pull, down, slide, down, pull, down, pull, down, up, and so on. Yeah, one more time maybe. So this way you will avoid picking another downbeat and you should already notice a little boost in this right hand flow. And then try to repeat this in a loop, right? So we would have... So we are only left with actually one upstroke now on the note E, which will feel in a way like a little stumbling block once you get into that flow, yeah? But this should give you really a little hint of how that flow already feels like once you're in it. If you are having trouble following the topics in this video, or you feel that you are missing some pieces to the puzzle to integrate all of this into your playing, then I would highly recommend that you check out my online courses. Sure, you can learn a lick on YouTube here and there and do some cobbling together. But if you don't have an understanding how all these pieces work together, then none of this will do or move the needle in your guitar playing and everything will end up as a drop in the ocean. Don't be just a lifestyle guitar player who watches video after video for entertainment without ever getting anywhere. So treat your passion like a pro. At the end of the day, we all want to see real progress and know that we are on our path. And I will try my best to provide you with free content on here as much as possible. But if you are serious about evolving into a more advanced player, then I can't stress enough to you to join one of my online courses. I'll be with you every step of the way to help you finally unleash your full potential and you can find the links in the description down below. Check out anrimaruyama.com to learn more about my online courses. All right, guys, so let's do this in one more position or in the next octave, yeah? So everything's gonna stay the same, same picking direction, same notes, same everything. So let's pick this C here on the fifth fret. So we're gonna start with an upstroke, down D, up E, down F, Hammer, down G sharp, slide, down B, hammer, down B, pull off, down A flat, slide, down F, pull off, and down stroke D. And then you're back home at the C, you know? So one more time. Up, down, up, down, hammer, down, slide, down, 
pull off, down, slide, down, pull off, down, pull off, down, up, down, and so on. You could also skip just the first few notes and you don't always have to start from C and this way you can actually keep that flow uninterrupted without any uh, upstrokes, right? So let's say you would start on this G sharp and um, play this in a loop like this. is much more relaxed than the traditional way of doing down, up, down, up, down, up. Thank you. 